So welcome to the second Taka in Lama Tsongkhapa's life. Uh, Lama Tsongkhapa Lotsan Drakpa, again this is part of the celebration of 600 years since his passing away. Um, so in the second Taka it covers from age 0, just before his birth, until age 16 when he leaves for um, Tibet to start the main part of his studies. So, um, so Tsongkhapa was born in eastern Tibet, it's called Amdo, actually in an area called Kumbum. And actually his name is Tsongkhapa, so he's from the valley of Tsongkha. Tsong means onion in Tibetan, so Tsongkha means, I guess it's an area in eastern Tibet where there are a lot of onions grow in this valley. So he's Tsongkhapa means the person from Tsongkha. It's a common way of um, addressing people in Tibetan. His actual name that he's famous, famously known by is uh, Losan Drakpa, which is an, his ordination name. Uh, he was ordained at the age of seven when he got that name. It's not, it's not clear what, what name his parents gave him at birth. But um, anyway, let's look, let's look at the events relating to his birth. So while his mother was pregnant with him, actually his father had two different dreams, kind of um, prophetic dreams or like, you know, dreams foretelling uh, something auspicious to happen. So in the first dream, uh, his father has a dream that there's a monk comes to their house carrying a lot of scriptures and goes up to the shrine room at their house and is reading the scriptures. So based on that, the father thinks, oh, maybe I'll have an, I'll have an intelligent child. Then the second dream, the father sees um, the Bodhisattva or the Buddha of um, power, Vajrapani, who's responsible for uh, taking care of all of the tantric teachings of Buddhism. So he sees this Vajrapani throwing a Vajra and the Vajra absorbing into the mother's womb. And based on that, the father thinks, I'll have a child that's very powerful, perhaps. Then um, there's a, a famous lama, a famous yeah, uh, guru in that area named Choji Dundur Brinchen, who becomes Lama Tsongkhapa's first teacher. So at one point, this Choji Dundur Brinchen has a dream of um, a very renowned Buddhist deity called Yamantaka, um, who's again a wrathful emanation of the Buddha of Wisdom, Manjushri. And in the dream, Choji Dundur Brinchen, who has strong faith in this deity, he says, you know, when will I be able to actually see you in person? You know, I would very much like to see you in person. And Yamantaka says to him, just relax, one year from now, I'll come to this, this valley in this direction. And he points in, in the direction of Tsongkhapa. Um, and then, you know, one year later, Tsongkhapa is born. And Shudra Dinder Brinchen has the impression that actually this, so this boy that he knows through his clairvoyance, he's a very clairvoyant lama, is actually an emanation of Yamantaka. Then the, uh, Tsongkhapa's mother, um, yeah, Tsongkhapa's mother has two different dreams during her pregnancy. In one, um, many people are playing instruments and there's a procession and making offerings, flowers and you know, music and, um, and food. And there's a procession where Avalokiteshvara is coming to their village. Um, so that's auspicious. And then some of the villagers in the area have a dream that this famous statue of um, Shakyamuni Buddha in Lhasa is being brought to their village. Um, yeah, some of the villagers in the area have that dream. And then, so I'll read from the text a little bit. Let's see. Um, hmm. Then following a dream in which Dakinis opened the crystal door of his mother's heart and ritually bathed her, Tsongkhapa was born at dawn at the end of the Firebird year. That's uh, 1357. So soon after Tsongkhapa was born, then this, this famous uh, guru in the area, Chuchi Dundurbinchen, he sent Manjushi, um, uh, sorry, yeah, Manjushi relic pills to bless Tsongkhapa and his mother. And then about the age Tsongkhapa was three years old, Tsongkhapa's father, uh, whose name is, uh, what is it, Dharma Khaje uh, Gebum, uh, Lubum Ge, uh, Lubum Ge. So Tsongkhapa invi Tsongkhapa's father invites this Lama to their home, and when the Lama comes, he brings tons of offerings and lots of livestock, sheep and goats and horses and cattle and so forth, and offers to their father and says, please give me your child to raise and train as a, as a monk and as a monastic scholar. And the father very happily agrees to that. Um, and then later in his third year, the Karmapa, now there's the current Karmapa, I think it's the sixth, 17th Karmapa. So the fourth Karmapa at that time, Ropa Dorje, he's traveling through that region and he, he bestows um, refuge vows on Tsongkhapa and at, at that time gives him the name Kunga Ningpo. So that's his first, his refuge name is <coughs> Kunga Ningpo. <laughs> then, um, at six years old, Tsongkhapa goes to live with Chuji Dundurinjin and at that time he first receives many initiations, Heruka initiation, 
I think Vajrapani initiation and then memorizes some rituals, sadhanas related to those and does retreat and actually starts doing self-initiations even before he's seven years old. Then at the time he's seven years old, having strong renunciation for the busyness of you know, lay life, then he takes the vows of a, a novice monk. And at that time his name is, the name given to him is Losan Drakpa. So that's the name he's known to throughout his life. And then up until he's 16, he stays with that teacher and studies and memorizes different texts. And then at around the age of 16, realizing, you know, recognizing that in order to do serious study of, of Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy, one needs to go to the major study centers in central Tibet. Then with the blessing and advice of his teacher, he sets out for central Tibet. So that's the conclusion of the, first, the second topic.